Well, today is my 34th Mother's Day, my eighth Mother's Day as an actual mom. And all these years of watching mothers and being mothered and actually mothering myself, truth be told, I don't feel like I know what I'm doing quite yet. <laughs> For a long time, I thought that that was just me. I thought maybe it was just that I wasn't one of those girls who grew up um, dreaming of being a mother. Um, I actually think that idea got crushed the first time I babysat some kids. <laughs> My mom loves to tell this story because she had a lot of fun watching this experience roll out. But I was a brand new Red Cross caring certified babysitter and I was 10 years old and my mom had a co-worker who had two beautiful little girls and she was looking to um, have them watch for a few hours so my mom offered for us to do it together but I took on the responsibility I took over our enclosed porch and turned it into my own daycare center I had a table for arts and crafts I had a kitchen for them to play with I had um, a reading nook probably knowing me I had a schedule you know 10 to 10 30 you know, craft, <laughs> 10.30 snack. Um, I thought I was all ready to go, but what happened was these two sweet blonde-haired tornadoes <laughs> walked into our home, and within 60 minutes, they had completely ransacked my beautiful set-up porch. They had pretty much gone through every activity that I thought would take us through the afternoon, and they were sitting on my lap as I was trying to read them a story and kept saying, but why, but why? Why? I think that's my most vivid memory, actually, is looking and seeing my mom peeking through the window as I was trying to do this story time and just seeing her laugh. <laughs> she loves to tell this story. Anyway, it was the longest four hours of my entire life, I'm quite certain, and I never wanted to babysit ever again. And for, truthfully, I really didn't. I didn't babysit a lot when I was younger. Uh, I just thought kids just, kids just weren't my thing. And uh, I had a lot of dreams for my life. I uh, Lots of dreams, always had lots of dreams. And a husband and a family were on the list, but I wouldn't say that they were prominently at the top. So I guess it shouldn't be much of a surprise when, as a new wife, two and a half years into my marriage and eight months pregnant for my first child, I found myself sitting on a love seat that sat far too low to the ground <laughs> for an eight-month pregnant woman in the office of a marriage counselor. Um, my lonely husband, who was still waiting after uh, watching me go through grad school and uh, career moves and pursuing those dreams with that ambition I had, um, that lonely husband had become a bitter husband. And he was really ready to walk out on our marriage. In fact, he kind of had one foot out the door. He had pretty much decided. And we sat in that counselor's office, um, and he was sitting next to me. And I remember him admitting to our counselor that he didn't think I was going to be a good mother. And those words stung not because they were false, but because I actually believe they were true too. Which means <laughs> I'm probably the most unlikely person <laughs> to be asked to speak to you on Mother's Day. Um, I'm really the un most unlikely person to be a stay-at-home mom, um, raising five young sons who are seven uh, and down to one-year-old. Um, but the call to the unlikely right? How many times have we heard the story? The Bible is full of stories um, of the unlikely becoming the used. So that's what I am here this morning. Um, God's not looking for the prepared. He's not looking for the perfect. He's not looking for the presentable. He's just looking for the willing. So I'm willing to be here this morning, um, willing to be in your lovely church, um, willing to wear this microphone for the first time. I had to get a little crash course on this. And really just willing to share a little bit of my story of motherhood, um, really of what I've learned so far. Um, and hopefully in the process of me sharing, you can see that God is in the process of teaching all of us something. Uh, I read on a blog with other Christian ladies. It's the new pastime of mothers. We all used to scrapbook, and now we all blog. <laughs> I was hours out from a deadline a few weeks ago for a family post, and I had no inspiration, no idea what I was supposed to write. So in a moment of either pride or stupidity, I'm not really sure which, I posted to my Facebook status asking anyone and everyone to send me their biggest parenting question and see if I could tackle it. <laughs> and it took like two responses in 
you know, how Facebook is in those 30 seconds to realize I had none of these answers. None of the answers. In fact, I had the very same questions as everybody was sending me. And I realized that I'm not the only person who feels like they don't know what they're doing. Uh, right? Anybody else out there, a parent, <laughs> and doesn't feel like they know what they're doing just yet? Instead of receiving inspiration that night to write about knowing anything at all, which is really very little, I wrote, ended up writing about what I'm learning through parenting. Um, what am I learning through motherhood? The truth is, they're probably the same lessons that all of us are learning in some way, shape, or form. Uh, whether it's in parenting, whether it's in our marriages, in our singleness, in our waiting, in our healing, in our living, I think these lessons really come through in, in many ways. So the first lesson I'm learning about in mothering is obedience. <laughs> This word is a regular at our house. With five little boys under the age of seven, you got to experience a little bit of them <laughs> here during worship. We are teaching obedience. We're teaching it daily. We are teaching it hourly. We are teaching it constantly. How many of us have opened up God's word in those moments with our kids and pointed to Colossians 3.20 and said, see, see right here, the Bible says, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And that might be the most practical thing today, is those moments where you just want them to do what you ask them to do, and they keep asking you why they should do it, and you run through several explanations, and you finally just want to say, because I told you so. <laughs> so now maybe a new answer would be, because it pleases the Lord. <laughs> And here's the thing about obedience, just like anything else, is it can't be taught until it's first learned. And just when I feel like I'm the adult, I realize I'm still the child. For God's word also says, obey God because you are his children in 1 Peter. And I was trying to think of a good example of my obedience to God to share with you guys, and, and this, this is it. This is it right here, the fact that I'm standing before you, um, the unlikely mother I'm no sermon writing girl. I've never done this before. You know, I speak to a handful of moms at a mops meeting. That's my comfort zone. You know, other moms holding babies, drinking coffee. Um, but to stand here before you this morning, it, honestly, it felt a little out of my league when I was asked. Um, but just like all those stories in the Bible, I knew that those unlikely messengers who are just being obedient, they all have the same climax of the story. And that's when God shows up. So I'm confident that following obedience, God is there. Parenting has also given me a new perspective on obedience. There are times when my boys will obey me because they fear what will happen if they don't. <laughs> and, or it's because I've bribed them with you know, a fruit snack or screen time or some other tantalizing privilege. But what means the most to me as a mom are those acts of obedience that don't become, uh, don't, they don't come because of the, of the consequence or the, or the privilege. They come because they want to obey me, because they want to please me. Those are the moments that mean the most as a mom, when you think you're actually making some, pro making some progress. In the same way, God wants not just our obedience, but our motive for that obedience to be to please him. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Later on it says, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. And later in 1 John it also said, this is how we know the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. So you see, love and obedience, they really, they really go hand in hand. And if I want to love these five boys, these special children of God whom I know he's given me to care for, and if I want to love that God who rescued me from the death of sin and from the brink of divorce, then I need to walk in obedience. So that's lesson number one. <laughs> lesson number two, usually if I struggle to obey, if I hesitate for one instant to do what the Lord has asked me to do, it's because of the sacrifice I know that that obedience is going to require. Sacrifice has been a big lesson <laughs> in mothering. Back to the eight-month uh, pregnant me sitting on the couch of the marriage counselor, I was watching the dream of my husband and my family 
The dream that I really didn't even know that I wanted, I was watching it unravel before me, and I realized it's what I wanted. It's what really mattered. And I knew the Lord was asking me to go all in on this man and all in on this family, to walk away from that career, to completely quit my job, and dedicate myself to this marriage. And in, in that act of obedience, I, I was being tested by God, probably for the first time in my young Christian walk, to show my love for him and just do what he was asking me to do. And not unlike what I see my own children doing, I became that questioning child to my heavenly father. But God, he says he's leaving me. I could very well be a single mom, just like my own mother. How will I provide for me and this child? But God, I've worked so hard to get here. You've given me these gifts. They're being used. I'm good at this. People appreciate what I'm doing here. And um, I just spent $40,000 on a master's degree that I thought you wanted me to use. Do you really want me to walk away from all of that? I was that child saying, but why? But why? But why? And finally, I realized what Psalm 51, 7 says. The sacrifice you, God, wants is a broken spirit, a broken and a repentant heart. And it wasn't about my career, and it wasn't about my degree, and it wasn't about this baby I was carrying or this marriage that was broken. It was about my heart. He needed it to break. He needed me to see that I was in a desperate state, that I had sinful ways. Something had to die in order to bring new life. This is the gospel. This, this is Jesus. He died for everything so that those who received his new life would no longer live for themselves. Instead, they'll live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. 2 Corinthians 5.15 If sacrifice is the lesson, then mothering is the grueling midterm exam. <laughs> the never-ending one, right? Mothering is the gospel lived out every day in the monotony of diapers and dinner and dishes. It's the holy place of laundry and Lysol and lunchboxes. It's the getting up long before you're rested and the laying down long after you're tired. A mother laying down her life for her child in the everyday, this is my gospel. This is my sacrifice. Truth be told, the sacrifice of my job has been the easiest one so far. <laughs> My waistline, my hobbies and my pastimes, really a cinch. My normal size purses, my entire shoe wardrobe that is now a half size too small, nothing, nothing compared to the daily wringing out of one more bit of me when I'm certain I've poured it all dry. That last trip up the stairs to tuck them in one more time when all you want to do is sit. The folding of laundry, the emptying of dishwashers, the scrubbing of crockpots at the end of the day when I'd much rather do just about anything else. The peeling of myself from between the sheets to answer the call of that child in the wee hours of the night, only to do the same thing about 30 minutes later for his brother. <laughs> and the early mornings, oh, how the early mornings have challenged me. These little boys who peer over my bed are growing up. I see it each and every day, but so am I. And I'm hopefully growing to be like him. The next thing I'm learning through mothering is about surrender. We must first take that on our knees, laid before him position, before we can stand and walk out obedience and sacrifice. In our house, you'll hear the topic of will come out a lot. We have these adorable little sons, and each of them seem to have one and a strong one, some of them stronger than others. And it's our job to teach them to submit their will to God under God's authority and for the time being to submit their wills to us. A defiant Peter's boy will hear the loving rebuke of his father's voice as he says, whose will are you doing right now? Are you doing your will or God's will? They hear this so much they can, they can, they can ask each other the question, we've heard that too. But truth is, I've heard that same rebuke from my Heavenly Father. Danielle, whose will are you doing? The raising of these five boys, the training, the molding of them into men for God, it's a, it's a high calling. It, it, it's something far greater than I could ever have seen myself doing. And for me, it has been my individualized lesson plan. The great teacher, 
He knows me. He knows it takes a little more with me than some of my, his other students to keep me humble, to keep me from boasting in my strength and letting him come into my weakness. I'm a slow learner in this category. I like to try to do it on myself. This calling to mother, this is my daily coursework on humility. <laughs> I love what Philippians chapter 2 says about learning to take on the humility of Christ. It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort comes from his love, if, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but to the each, but each of you to the interests of others. And if you were to peek into my class notes here, I would probably have translated, tra translated this as, Danielle, if you're learning anything at all here, learn that this is not about you. <laughs> I was an only child. It took me a while to get that lesson. Philippians goes on to say, if your relationship with one another in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who in, being very, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He was God. He made himself nothing. He took the very nature of a servant. He was humble and he was obedient right to the cross. My walk with Christ, my journey through mothering, they've really been one and the same. Not two experiences side by side, but so intertwined that there's no separating the two from one another. I'm not the same young Danielle who sat in that love seat just weeks away from motherhood, that Danielle who couldn't even imagine this one standing before you today, because God is teaching me. He's changing me. Um, I'm learning to walk in obedience, to lay down myself so that something much more can have life. I continue daily to work out my salvation with fear and trembling over dishes of sinks <laughs> and sippy cups. For it is God who works in me to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. I'm still very new to this parenting thing. I don't even have teenagers yet, right? I don't even know what getting on your knees and surrendering all is until I have to let them drive a car. <laughs> but I'm bringing a lot, a lot more questions. <laughs> a lot more questions than I have answers. There's a, for certain, there's a lot more things that I'm doing wrong, that I'm doing right. I'm doing my best to teach our boys about obedience, about sacrifice, about surrender. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just a child learning myself. And each day holds a pop quiz, right? Aren't kids great? Just as soon as you think you've got it figured out, <laughs> they throw something new at you. Each situation feels like a brand new test. And many days I feel like such a failure as a mother. And I imagine standing before God, my great teacher, preparing for a grade, him handing me the transcript of my life and looking under those subjects and seeing motherhood and looking over and expecting to see that big F, that big F written in red, except that F written in red is written in blood and it means forgiven. And I may not be a great mother, but I'm a grace mother. <laughs> yep. Not all of us are mothers. Not all of us are parenting, but all of us are learning and growing and changing under God's mighty hand. He has something to teach us, something he, he so beautifully showed us in Christ's own obedience and his sacrifice and his surrender. And if I can show just a bit of those lessons through my example to my boys, well then, maybe, maybe just maybe, I could be a good mother after all. So I want to thank you all so much. I would just love to encourage the moms out there um, on this Mother's Day that um, if you feel like you don't know what you're doing, 
That's absolutely normal. Um, I have to say that my journey and a lot of my growth happened in MOPS, and I love your MOPS groups here. Um, so if you do nothing else to support a mom today, go buy a dozen chocolate <laughs> strawberries and eat them yourself. <laughs> and I just, I can't stand up here without looking over at these two folks who I can see are both choked up, which I love. <laughs> because I know that my journey in mothering um, has been helped along by them. My mom was a single mom, and if anybody has exemplified sacrifice, it's the single moms. Talk about uh, burning that candle at both ends and working through when you're tired. Um, nobody's asked to do it more than, than those ladies who are mothering alone. And for my husband, too. Um, he was the husband that sat on that couch, unsure of our marriage and our future and, and our course of mothering, but that is the moment that God grabbed us and used us. Uh, that's why we're in marriage ministry, because uh, the, Lord, the Lord grabbed us from that cliff, and we want to help other marriages too. So just for all the marriages out there, I just would like to encourage you too. For all the husbands out there that are sacrificing every day too, that are providing and supporting that mom, your job is just as important as ours, and we couldn't do it without you. And uh, so I just want to thank them, and thank you all for having me today.